Okay, we're starting out our change out today. We have an old Thermopride oil furnace here and a little outside room of this house. We're going to take it out, put in an electric heat pump, 16 sear Goodman DSZ 16 with the AVPTC air handler. There's an old Goodman straight cool unit right there we're taking out as well. We're getting started on the process here. It's going to be a zone system. So it should be pretty cool. But there's some of our stuff and we're going to get started. Okay, there's our old uh, vent right there. That's an old vent from what I assume was the gas water heater at the time. There's our upstairs zone to be. You see how clean our room is now. Oh yeah. She is clean as can be now. Clean as a whistle. There's our electrical panel. Electrician is going to come in and do his thing and change out this panel. It's a little bit older. It's got old pool type and screw type fuses. So he's going to update that to breakers. There's our belt driven motor. Now the oil furnace had a problem where it uh, wouldn't run for very long. And I guess uh, I'm not quite sure what the issue was. I didn't service it. But uh, I don't know about that, fellas. Looks like she might have gone over limit. I'm going to take this thing home and wire it up and see what kind of action we get on that blower wheel. Because I'm betting it's going to be skipping a little. There's our downstairs line. See you down there. And I will get into this again on Monday. Order our stuff and get started on installing the new stuff. I just thought that was kind of funny. See this. Funny, I got it. I flipped it around outside and the, the belt just fell off, buddy. Yeah, that was easy. Okay, we're here on day two. We got our oil furnace out. I've spliced onto the flex in the crawl space to run it out into the mechanical area. I'm gonna end up putting a duct going right across here, probably 30 by 8. So we got to keep everything out of the way of this. Uh, they're gonna put a new panel right here. But that got, it's got to have the access it needs for that panel, so we're gonna keep everything on this side of the room. I'm going to build a fitting for this duct to turn it up the wall here a little bit and we're going to transition around. So I'm going to get working on that. I've got my metal out here to build the transition right there. Then we're going to seal this whole opening off with metal so nothing can get in and out of there. And then, uh, well that will take me a while. So I'll show you whenever I get all that stuff done. This is one side of my fitting here I'm making. It's an elbow. It's going to fit into here. There is the rest of it I'm building piece by piece. There's another side of the elbow and the front piece. I'm going to build the back and put them all together. And we're going to fit it up. Right, we got our fitting in here. And a little turning vein there. Everything's fitted up. I'm about to put the flare out piece on top of it so it can flare out and go into round pipe. Uh, slow going building the fittings, but it'll a little bit better for airflow and definitely a lot better for space. All right, there's our duct fitting. It's all finished. It's going to transition around. The air will actually be blowing down into that, under the crawl space for the supply zone under the house, first floor. And I'm about to insulate that and get started. The flare fitting for this one. Transition it and blow it up for the 16-inch round going into it. So, slow and steady. When we get to the stock pipe and stuff like that, it'll go much quicker. All right, my fitting's all done and insulated. I got some metal on the wall over there where the flex is coming through. Got metal up against the wall covering up those cracks over here. A lot of times the inspector wants us to cover up all the cracks into the crawl space. Even though right here is a giant gaping hole to the crawl space, I've actually had them still make me fire stop just our half of a chase uh, and leave the other part open. Who knows why, but we're going to head him off at the pass. Make sure he doesn't say anything about that. So I'm moving on to our next fitting. Get it ready. All right, we got our Goodman air handler in place. So you know, a base box. Then in the pan, I built a piece of 30 by 9 duct to go in the side of it. That's what you see right here. There's our fitting I built the other day. It goes up. There's a zone damper. Power open, power close going into the plenum box another duck heading over to the other fitting I built the other day little flare fittings 
And there's another power up and power close damper. Now I'm going to add the bypass off the side of this box. Let's go down to the return box at the bottom. Then the outside air is going to come off here. Probably go up and out the side of the house. And that's where we're at today. I'll do a little bit of control wiring. Then we'll get the unit started on emergency heat. Okay, as you see right here, we have our fresh air duct coming in down into the FAD6 fresh air damper. Six inch size that is matched up with this XCI zone panel, which I'm still wiring up as you see. Got the zone panel here. And this is the wireless controller for the thermostat upstairs by Honeywell. So I'm still wiring this stuff up. Uh, the emergency heat is on heating the house. Uh, the condenser is not actually in town yet. It's still being shipped. So we're waiting on that. There's another zone damper motor for the bypass, which goes all the way down to the return plenum down there. There's our good manitroll unit. Over here, the little object you see right there, is the return air sensor for the wireless stat. It keeps the call for air conditioning set to 82. And the heating call, I think it's set to 62. Uh, if the battery fails in a thermostat and there's no communication, it uh, makes sure that people don't freeze to death or overheat in the house. So, nice stuff. I always like using this stuff. It makes everything work very well. And uh, that's about it. All right, I'm running the line set now. There's our coil. There's our TXV mounted with a plate to the coil. Let's see. Emerson. Emerson TXV. There's my little freeze stat. And I ran a line set. What I did was I backed it off a little bit, then ran it down the side of the room. Just bent the line set up, put a bend in the copper to send it all the way over here, and then put a street elbow right here. I want to make sure there's enough room so people can turn and work on the electrical. So now I'm going to run the drain and the thermostat wire. The outdoor unit still hasn't arrived. It's being ordered from Goodman. And evidently that takes a long time to happen. So right now we're running on strip heat here. So we'll be happy when the unit arrives on Friday. I just finished the drain and what we have here is a secondary switch for the coil pan. We have an inline switch that I can also take out and I can blow CO2 down this line. You see the drain line goes through here and outside and then clean it out that way. There's a pan switch as well. So a lot of fail safes uh, to make sure the unit's draining properly. And if it's not draining properly, it'll give out cues as in it won't cool. So uh, gotta make sure the drain line's falling downward, insulated inside the structure here. Although it's technically not heated space, it's still insulated so it's not dripping all over the floor. And that's about it for today. I'm just just waiting for the unit to get here, and then I'm going to finish the low voltage wiring up there. There's our stuff and get this thing started. I'll be happy to see Well guys, I'm leaving Wilmington and I'm about 40 miles away and I'm going to a town called Durham, North Carolina because the truck that was bringing my unit in that's coming in today on Christmas, or right before Christmas here, has broken down in Georgia. Therefore, I have no unit until next week and that wasn't gonna fly. So now I'm driving to another branch and they're gonna give me the 18 seer uh, in lieu of the 16 seer. So I'm going to pick up that and haul it back. It's about a four hour trip. So I got a little road trip out of this, although I'm not really happy about it. Then I'm going to set this new 18 seer unit and hopefully wrap this thing up tonight. Well, I'm still on my trip here. I'm uh, coming up to Raleigh, North Carolina. It's the state capital. Uh, I've gone a little bit over 100 miles. Kind of the pain about this is, is a cold front came through, which some of you probably know that live in the area and the wind has been very high. So this thing, driving one of these vans, whether it be a uh, E150, 250, or 350, it's like driving around a huge mast. And every time the wind blows at 30 or 40 miles an hour, it just knocks you all over the road. So it's, it's almost like an exercise class, driving this thing up to Raleigh or Durham. So just having fun, keeping you posted here. And about, let's see, 
about 30, 35 more miles we'll be at the place picking up our unit heading back home. All right, 160 miles later and I have my DSZC communicating 18 seer heat bump. I am heading back to Wilmington and now I'm just part of the rat race here in uh, Raleigh Durham. So in about 20 or 30 miles I'll be out of this crap and onto a street where there's only a few cars which I like a lot better since I'm driving this giant weighted down mast down the street. So catch up with you then before I hit the All right, our system is operational. Right now we're on first stage. Putting out 107 degrees at 1200 CFM. It's our zone panel. See a little bit of indicator lights over here. See that the R means the power is on to zone 1. Y means call for compressor. Green is fan call. W is auxiliary heat call, although that's not being used right now. The zone board decides when the auxiliary heat will come on. Uh, here's our calls leaving to the equipment. Stage 1 fan. That's just power down there at the bottom. Over here is the second zone thermostat. This is our Honeywell THM 5320R. It's a receiver for our wireless thermostat upstairs. You see it says it does have power, heat is on, and fan. This is our bypass damper. It's closed. Our static pressure control switch. We adjust the static pressure for optimum so that it will be closed, the bypass will be closed when both zones are calling. Uh, our unit, very quiet unit. Our line set and drain we saw before. Uh, 10 kW heater. Here's our upstairs zone is on. Our downstairs zone is on right now. can't see it very much, but this is the condenser. This is actually 18 sear. Or it's 18 sear condenser producing 17 sear at a 5 ton level. So very quiet, very nice. Third line set. Got a block to anchor it to right there. Our connections. 17 sear, very nice. It's a DSZC, which is communicating uh, 16 or 18 sear. This particular one has an ECM fan motor and two-stage Copeland Ultratech compressor and it's just working fantastic. I'm very happy with how this turned out. Uh, the house is warming up. It's our outside air duct in there. Outside air you can tell it's giving a good flow through the outside air. We want about 60 to 80 CFM through there. So everything's working out great. Quiet unit. Got our blocks underneath it. Keep it out of the snow slash whatever piles of crud form out here. And that's about it for this one. Turned out good. Had to do some driving, but uh, in the end, it was a great system.